Hello, my name is Glenn Vickery and welcome to my YouTube channel Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival. Today we're going to be doing one of my favourite trees and probably, <clears throat> in my opinion, one of the most important trees in, in our country, in New Zealand. Uh, today we're going to be doing Kaiko Marco. Okay? Now Kaiko Marco is um, one of our most important trees because this tree is one of the trees that makes fire okay and we all know how important fire was to us back in the day okay without it uh, we wouldn't have maybe survived for very long as humans okay so this particular tree is um, a hardwood and there's only a couple of trees that were used uh, for making fire normally and that was kaiko mako being a hardwood and also tōtara being a hardwood so kaiko mako was used as the top piece of wood when scraping into a, a softer wood such as uh, mahui which i've uh, or mahui which i've also already covered and another uh, soft tree called pat pate okay so or pate okay so um this one is very important okay uh not as common as tortura but uh, in my opinion extremely rare actually and extremely hard to find this is the juvenile stage of the uh tree okay and these are the uh, flowers here or should i say not the flowers but the small um, leaves of the Kaiko Mako. Um, and these small leaves, they almost look like duck's feet, okay? And uh, a common name is duck's foot, okay? Well, this is how you can recognize uh, the tree, is these duck foot. Um, the problem, on top of the leaves here, you can see it's almost got um, I don't know how you'd describe it really but they've got like sort of veins on there okay and they almost look like marble marble wood tree uh, there's a tree called marble wood okay and uh, they also uh, it's got leaves very similar to this okay as far as the color goes as the tree goes uh, gets a little bit older the juvenile tree um, I should mention that it's it's all entangled, okay, the the stems here, they sort of jut out on, um, hey, this is a good one here, okay, you can see where they jut out, okay, they go out on an angle, come back in, and they go out on angles, okay, alright, and right at the corner of each angle, okay, uh, that's where the uh, leaves start to sprout off on the corners okay so that's one way of recognizing it the problem is there's so many there's a numerous amount of other trees uh, that do this okay and they look like very similar to Kaiko Marco uh, and I think one of them is a Comprosma um, just very difficult to identify in its young in its young juvenile form as it starts to get a little bit older and more mature, okay, the, um, it, the the leaves start to get larger, okay, and they start to stand out more so like this, okay, all right, if, if you can see those leaves there, okay, they start to look like that. They start to bury a little better, okay, and they start off with uh, the flowers are white, okay, and then they go into the little berries here and then they go into green berries all right the green berries here all right and then they go into like a purplish black berry all right right at the end okay now there's not much information about whether these were used for food the berries um but the purple berries okay purple black berries say here all right um are edible okay they are edible 
what do they taste like? Well, I'll tell you. Very fleshy. Every single one of these I've ever eaten has sort of got an acidic flavour that almost overpowers your mouth but then it goes away just as quick as it, as it came. Um, and it's sort of got a purple, like a purple goanna flavour but not a very strong distinction of purple goanna. Okay. The seed is a funny looking thing. Okay. It's got a, it's sort of like a light brown. Okay. And it has um, lines on it. Okay. If you can see the lines, I don't know if you can zoom in there. It's got like lines on it. All the seeds seem to have that. Lines on one side, and then when you flip it over, Almost lost it. Okay, you flip it over onto the side. Okay, it's almost like there's no lines there. Okay, but it's got these like white lines, so it's sort of like a tan color with little white lines going around it. Now this has um, got no flavor whatsoever. Okay, so you can chew on that. It has a little bit of juice inside of it, um, and it's fine. Okay. Not a problem. So the seed and the and the fruit together, not too bad of a feed. Okay, you wouldn't want to eat too many too many at once. So I'd say. Okay. As the juvenile stage starts here, it goes into the larger leaves and it starts to branch from a, what more looks like a bush and starts to branch up into more of a tree. So if you have a look up top, you can see it's going from like a scraggly bush into more of a tree okay and it starts to go you can see the branch is starting to stem out okay and what it is is one of the one of the uh, branch stems takes off and, and and takes charge pretty much and that's where the tree starts to branch out from okay so not quite quite an interesting um quite an interesting uh tree shrub slash tree um, and in my opinion if you were going to use this for uh, making fire you'd want a decent um, probably about a 20 cent 20 cent size piece of uh, timber okay and probably about I'd say 30 20 to 30 centimeter long um, piece of wood okay about that round and you want to use that as a uh, spindle, what we call a spindle. And it's probably easier making fire from the what we call the bow drill. It wasn't the traditional way of mouldy to make fire. It was the traditional way was um, like a plow, okay, and just sort of like really pushing like that. Whereas the bow drill is a lot easier and faster, obviously. So um, let's. What I want to do now is take you to another tree. Uh, which is a more just an adult version of the tree and we'll show you that. Okay, Thank you. so welcome back. Okay, so here's a um, a larger version of the tree. Okay, and we'll just zoom in so you can see the um, bark. Okay, so that's the bark there. It's quite sort of a, a scaly bark. Okay, all right, and we'll just move it around a bit so you can have a good look. All right, that's the um, the bark there. All right. got a little bit of lichen on it okay and we'll just go up here to one of the some of the uh, leaves all right you can see the duck's foot bit of the duck's foot there okay another part of duck's foot okay and I've always found with this tree here that it always has a lot of um, uh, branches like here with no leaves on them okay it's like all the leaves have fallen off okay I'm not quite sure why but I've always found that's a little bit of a telltale sign that it could be um, that it could be Keiko Marco tree okay so you can see here where some of the branches are um, 
have no uh, leaves on it okay all right and so this tree here this particular tree she's quite a big one okay it's quite a big tree she goes right up to there Yeah, beautiful, beautiful tree. Okay. Anyway, so um, that there is Kaiko Marco. Um, if you find one of these trees, um, I would highly advise that you um, uh, protect its location. Okay. And um, yeah, because the 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 they're very very rare in my opinion very very rare and it's probably something that we we need to do for this tree is to um, it should be planted more often as a um, as a as a ornamental tree or a garden tree um, uh, so we don't lose it so it doesn't become extinct okay uh, thank you for coming along I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, please subscribe comment and share the videos and um, learn your tr the trees of your country, learn what you can do with them, and um, pass on the knowledge. Awesome, thank you for coming.